Hey everybody, it's Dave Stone with another exciting episode of Develop Awesome Skills and this is a surprise live today. So I just tried to go live, but for some reason my phone cut me off, so sorry about that. But uh, this is the live feed right now. So I decided to go surprise live today because I wanted to show you the yard. And, and right behind me, um, and right behind me is uh, Giant Leafs Cutting. This is Campfire Moringa. And um, it got hit by the storm. <laughs> it got hit by the storm last time. The storm's been coming on really crazy, but really awesome. I've been enjoying the rain. Man, we've been getting a ton of rain. So uh, I just wanted to show you, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the whole update of Stonehaven right now, um, really quick. It's, I'm not gonna do too long and it might go a little bit long, but I wanted to show you guys the, the little quick tour before the Sunny Slope Open Studio Tour. So on October 27th is the Sunny Slope Open Studio Tour. I'm gonna be filming the whole day too, as much as I can, um, but and bring it all to the people that can't make it out. But if you're in Arizona and you can make it out on October 27th, which is only not that, not that far away. <laughs> this has the different screen on it uh, right now. But, oh yeah, I mean 12 days away for October 27th. So. I'm getting the yard shaped up and I wanted to show you a little bit of the work that I've been doing because uh, Farmer Scott Brown from, uh, Farmer Brown Grows on Instagram came down and uh, he totally helped me out this weekend. So really appreciate it, Scott. It was awesome to have you down here. And I'm gonna show you some of the cool stuff that we did in the backyard to get it ready for the tour. And I wanna show you this behind me though real quick. This is Giant Leaf. Uh, if you guys have been following me and you know, um, all the videos I've been doing. This, well, this is Campfire Moringa. This is Giant Leaf's cutting, and I chopped this whole thing down probably maybe three months ago. You could look back at the videos, but uh, <laughs> it's already, I mean, it's above that power line that's above my house right now. So that's Giant Leaf just blowing up and exploding after a big trim during the midsummer. And then right behind Giant Leaf, it looks like the same thing, but that's the intensive bed where the 150 Moringa is in there. I'm gonna show you a little close up of that as well because uh, that's what it's all about is growing more trees. So <laughs> thanks for everybody that's on right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna show you these. Uh, first off, I wanna show you the Moringa bed, the uh, intensive one, because check this out. These trunks down here, it's like a little forest. They're pretty thick, a lot of them, and I don't know. Look at this one. It's super thick. They're growing so close together. So I'm going to be taking these Moringas out and bare rooting all of them. About that. I got a phone call, but um, yeah, so I'm going to be bare rooting these trees for the Sunny Slope Open Studio Tour because this bed has to come out. So that will be cool. But look at this intensive bed here. <laughs> it's, it's insane really how big this thing is getting and how quickly it's getting there. And look at uh, campfire, just totally leaning over to, look at that. The storm just bent the whole tree over. But campfire is just growing so fast. I've really never experienced a tree ever Grow this fast. If you guys like Moringas and you're watching, give me a big green thumbs up right now because this, I chopped that right there about three months ago. So crazy. Check it out. I mean, maybe 15 feet up to the top there. Pretty amazing. So that is a campfire. And then I had just pruned Hawaii, which is Maui, Maui's cutting, just a little while ago, but probably about four weeks ago. So it's really starting to sprout in heavy and nice now. But look, you just chop off all the tops, well, what I do, chop off the top, leave the branch, and it's gonna get a lot of sprouts on every, uh, especially if you leave these, these uh, horizontal branches, you actually get some vertical sprouts coming up, which is kind of cool. It'll, it'll really fill in this canopy nicely. And then look at the trunk of, of Hawaii right now. That was a cutting 
last November. So one year ago, I dropped a cutting that was about, it was about two inches, maybe two and a half inches in diameter. And one year, it turned into this trunk. So, Moringas are fantastic. They're amazing. But walking around in wood chips sometimes gets splinters. So, um, this right here is a desert gold peach. Now, this was a bare root desert gold peach from Greg Peterson. And I planted it. And look at this. It was this tall. And it was a little stick. Um, it's grown so much since spring. I planted it probably March and it's already taller than me. And my back, I keep getting disconnected. Hey, Candace, what's up? How's it going? Uh, hopefully you're still there. Uh, the, I don't know why I always have so much trouble with these live videos. Maybe just cause I'm walking out in my yard. If you guys know how I can do better live videos without cutting everybody off all the time, do I need like a booster or something in my house? I don't know. But anyways, I'll teach you how to grow some trees. So this is a table full of goodies that I got from Farmer Brown Grows over on Instagram. Check him out. He's starting a food forest. He's got a one year food forest and he brought me a whole bunch of really sweet plants. A lot of them are gonna need some shade, but some of them are really cool. Some of them don't, like this is a cranberry hibiscus and this is some chaya let me flip it around here so yeah this is a cranberry hibiscus right here excited to plant that this is a tamarind that he grew from seed and it's looking so good this is a jackfruit also that he grew from seed um, black malanga i guess they get huge these leaves need some shade here got some bamboo i think it's a japanese giant Maybe, not really sure. And then some chaya. So that's uh, some, I believe it's called like Incan or Peruvian spinach. The thing about chaya is it's a superfood, but you need to cook it properly. You, you're not supposed to eat the leaves green. I don't know how serious it is, but supposedly the leaves have cyanide in them if you eat them green. But when you cook them, you get, it cooks all the cyanide out and then they turn into a superfood. So super crazy, but um, don't cook them in aluminum because aluminum will have a reaction with the stuff in the chaya. Anyways, sometimes you got to do a few things to make something a superfood, but um, it's pretty amazing. And some dragon fruit cuttings here. These are some Tabasco peppers. Super excited about those. And then some cool sugar cane. Really excited about this. This is a variegated red sugar cane. Um, and then some sweet potatoes and other stuff. So... So thanks, Scott. Appreciate, about, appreciate all of that. Also, I just started planting flowers because I was really getting into trees last year. And I just started planting some flowers around this uh, fountain. And this fountain, the bees really love it. Uh, I had a canopy of sunflowers over it and then I just harvested all the sunflowers so the bees don't have as much shade right now on there. But what I really wanna show you is the backyard because I'm, I had to, get it all ready for this tour on the 27th. So for the Sunny Slope Open Studio Tour. But if you wanna check out the very first video on my channel, you could see the difference between, I think I was pretty much standing right here and I was showing you the backyard. And so now there it is again. And you know, this was actually all dirt this spring. Hey Mary, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, yeah, so this was actually in spring, all dirt. We planted those moringas this year back there. And now all the pathways are in, the wood chips are in, the trees are just thriving. And I can't wait till next year because this is really going to pop. That second year you put the food forest in and you put, start putting all the wood chips in, that's when things really start popping. So I'm excited about my backyard next year. Um, and then I kept you in the loop on the passion fruit. So this is a um, edgeless Frederick's passion fruit that's on my fence here. I got tons of fruit from it this year and it's just so green. It's stayed green all year. It had a little bit of browning during the middle of the uh, summer, but 
it's looking great. And then a huge big addition to my house here at Stonehaven are these gutters. Well, oh, the sun is right in my face. I put gutters on and I put this, uh, this flexible downspout and I, I already, I got two buckets and I already filled them all up. So what am I doing with the rainwater? I mean, you could do a lot of different things with rainwater, but I'm making some Stonehaven green gold fruit tree maximizer. It's a mouthful, but it, well, you don't want to be drinking it. It's actually for your plants to eat. If you want it, if you want your fruit trees to feed you, you know, you got to feed them. And so what I did is I'm uh, concocting up a whole bunch of fermented Moringa concentrate fer fertilizer. It's a concentrate. One little eight ounce jar is going to make 40 gallons of uh, fertilizer. So you can use it for a foliar spray or a root drench. But I'm doing it for myself, but I'm just making a ton of it. So you guys can use it too if you want. But I'm going to be launching that product also on October 27th. And it is a little bit stinky. <laughs> but, you know, it's going to have all my good stuff in it. Plus a fermented Moringa base made with rainwater. So it's all rainwater. I wanted to make sure I didn't use any water from the tap. Because I'm going to go get it tested too. So you guys will see uh, all the, you know, NPK and all the ratios for that. And then the second product actually, which I... Uh, Farmer Brown has been helping me design a contraption is check out this cool little contraption here. This is a bag filler, two part or two part. And we totally rigged it up. A little ramp thing there and we put the bags right on top of there. And then we put that in there and boom, a little ramp to throw your wood chips in to fill this bag up. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm making Stonehaven fortified wood chips. Hey, what's up Cal North New Jersey Cali, wait, NJ Cali Gardner. So I don't know the name, but NJ Cali Gardner. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much for being here and checking this out, but check it out. So I got a stencil and I'm making fortified wood chips because the one thing about wood chips is they already inoculate. But if you're gonna get a lot of wood chips, why not get ones that are a bag full of fungus and azomite? So that's what I'm fortifying these with is additional uh, mycorrhiza, a lot of it, and also a lot of rock dust. So these are gonna be, uh, you're from New Jersey. You live in Cali now. Oh, nice, right on, right on. So that's why you got them both combined. I like that. Um, but yeah, so these big, huge bags of wood chips that are fortified with extra mycorrhiza and, oh, good workout. That's part of the garden workout right there. But Stonehaven Fortified Wood Chips are going to be for sale on October 27th. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to ship these. So only if you come to Stonehaven can you get some. And the reason I'm using these bags is because they're recyclable. So you can buy them by the bag up front. But then when you want to come get them refilled, you just come get them refilled and it'll be cheaper. Because I want to do recycling, you know. It's important to me. Anyways, check this out. Scott took the wheelbarrow around with some really nice fine chips and started dumping it on the pathways. And now it actually looks like a backyard. So let me flip it around. So check this out. I used the, I took the fire pit down and I uh, took all the rocks and kind of made like areas. I got to fix some, I got to fix some sprinkler right there, but you know, like loop it around, little birdhouse. Oh my goodness, guys. Check out the monkey pod. Look at this. It is literally just doing so well. But look how tall it is. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you guys like the monkey pod. This tree is going to be the very top canopy, top, top canopy of my yard. It's supposed to get like 80... To 100 feet high. I love how the leaves close up, but in the daytime they just open up to gather all the sunlight. But it's just doing so well, really well. And I have this really beautiful little mesquite. I think it's a mesquite, I'm pretty sure, but look at when you walk underneath here, look at how that looks. I love looking up through this. And this was a seed that started in my, thanks for the thumbs up guys. Hey Renee, this was a seed that just started coming up through my wood chips in spring. Ian, you just got some Moringa powder. 
Heck yeah. Now you need to use the Moringa powder in everything. Like you could totally cook with it, take it in the morning, put it in your smoothies, uh, just everything, every single thing. Well, not everything, but anything savory. It's really, really good to put in. But this red thornless, it's a thornless tree too. It's gonna get so big. I, I, and this is probably like my middle canopy. So we got monkey pod right here, which is gonna be the very top canopy, I hope. And then right underneath that, we have like, a middle canopy, which maybe this will be like a 40 foot, maybe 50 foot canopy. And the monkey pot, hope, hopefully the monkey pot will be 60 or more. That would be super sweet, but we'll see. Five years or so, we'll, we'll know. And then another really exciting tree in my backyard right now is this one, the neem tree. I don't know if you remember when I planted this. Hey, Orlando Backyard Gardening, what's up? Um, this is the neem tree. And look at this beautiful, red foliage that's coming in, the new growth. Um, let me flip this camera around. But it's really doing so well. And I let the ducks out today and they were actually eating it. So I wonder if they like it. It's, it's, it's really good for you. It's just very bitter. And then a quick update also on the uh, Craig's Moringas. These are the ones I dug out and me and Craig planted them. This is uh, Honolulu, I believe, and Kauai. Uh, either Kauai or Honolulu. <laughs> one of these is Honolulu, one of these is Kauai. I gotta figure it out. I forgot. But I think this is Honolulu and this is Kauai. Yeah, that's it. So Honolulu is doing so well. It was just a small root ball. We just ripped it out of the ground. We weren't even too sensitive about it and then put it in the ground here. And then this one too, it just, as long as you grab some root ball when you transplant these things. Pat, hello Pat, how are you? So this one's just doing so well. I'm excited about it. Oh, and I want you guys to say hi to the ducks. I just landscaped around the duck pen here and I got some sunflowers growing down there. I got some Fredonia grapes here and a fig over there. On the other side, I have some more grapes, some Cabernets and another fig. But I want you to meet the ducks. Hi girls, hey, if you like my ducks, give me a big green thumbs up. Comment below if you like ducks because these are literally way cooler than chickens. I mean, I know you guys are chicken lovers out there too. I like chickens, but I've never had any animals as cool as these girls. What's up girls? Now this is Olivia. Hi, sweet. That's Mildred. She's the queen of the coop. Absolutely. But Mildred's like second in command. And then turquoise back there is, uh, but she's kind of the scaredy cat. And there's like an already kind of like a little pond back here. See, Mildred's like pecking at turquoise, showing her who's boss. James Fox. Dave, there are... Always ants going up and down my moringa tree and it looks like it has aphids. Should I be concerned or step in and take care of it? Um, hey James, yeah, let me talk about that here in a second. I'll flip the camera around and talk about that in a second. Um, hi Mildred, hi baby. But now they let me pet them. Look, Mildred is awesome. And turquoise, and this is Olivia. She's amazing too, hi baby. And then that's turquoise, she doesn't like me too much. But I'm gonna show you back here, there's an egg. Hi girls. Yeah, it's okay turquoise, I'm not gonna hurt ya. Hi baby. See most, they're all good, turquoise just doesn't really like me too much. Hi Mildred, thanks for your egg. Mildred's the one that's laying right now. But I'm feeding them moringas and other stuff. And I'm letting them out. And they, hey Mildred, hi, do you wanna come out? Okay, I'm gonna let them out while I'm doing the video. Okay, so let's talk about these aphids, James. So the ants, they're fine, I mean, you know, if you trim your Moringa and there's a lot of ants on it, you just don't want to really grab it 
because you get ants all over yourself, but just put the put the moringas on the side, let the ants kind of kind of just go do their thing. This is amazing. I'm going to get more ducks. I told Kristen who gave me these ducks who you guys need to call if you want some Muscovy ducks um, that I want some more ducks. And she's almost due, so give her some congratulations because her baby's coming soon. But anyways, Muscovy ducks, what am I talking about? I got off topic. Aphids and ants, that's right, James. So, <clears throat> ants are fine on the Moringas. They're, they're fine on the Moringas because, you, you know, they're not doing anything to hurt the Moringa. Um, I'm kind of just getting okay with ants. They're gonna be crawling up and down your trees, especially because there is there is sap in the Moringa. I wouldn't have thought the sap was sweet, but the ants, ants do seem to like it. So ants are fine. Aphids, on the other hand, are not okay. I don't really like it when I have aphids all over my Moringas. And I did uh, last, last year, one time last year. I do have a whole bunch of aphids over in this uh, sweet sorghum patch over here for some reason. So I need to learn a little bit more about aphids. You know, I tried to bring some ladybugs in last year and they just all flew away because my garden wasn't big enough. So now hopefully I have enough kind of habitat for them to stick around. But yeah, get rid of the aphids. Pick off all the branches that have aphids in them. You know what you should do? Throw them in a bucket of water. If it's a whole bunch of branches and just let them ferment there, put a cover on it, let them ferment there for, you know, a month or so, it's gonna stink. But then you're gonna have some really awesome fertilizer uh, after that to do a root drench with. So, hey, what's up, Juan Arcos? So yeah, so I mean, that's what I would do. I would take all the branches with aphids off of it, soak them, you know, flood all the aphids out. Um, you could burn them if you want, but you don't really have to. Just drown the aphids and make some fertilizer. That's my opinion. Anyways, so this is the backyard, everybody. It is turning into something that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with. And thanks to Scott, he really, uh, I have some slabs there on the ground too that are outlining some of the paths. And let me flip it around. Spray your tree with water. Oh, okay. Just, you mean for the aphids? I think that's what you mean. Um, so I have these little slabs here I got from my arborist friend, Justin. This is that slab that he had at his place, the mesquite slab that he gave me. It's been raining, so they're a little wet. But right now I'm allowing them to just line my yard and before I make some furniture with them. So that's what they are doing. Whole bunch of really cool little pieces right here too. It's like a little arrowhead right there. Praying mantis also eat aphids. Oh, thanks. Uh, New Jersey Cali Gardener, I appreciate that. I definitely want some more praying mantises. So let me know how I could make, I mean, would they just love my yard now or do they, do I have to provide a habitat for them somehow? That would be pretty sweet. Um, I want to show you a couple more moringas. Hi girls. It's cool to see your ducks hanging out outside. Um, so right next to the wood chips, I have these other moringas in the back. All right, let me see if I can get a good shot. This is fragrant mor moringa that has a really insanely massive pod on it. Like one pod right there, it's huge. Um, this is a moringa that almost died on me, came back. And then this one right here is a PKM1 monster. Like look at all of these. Hey, Juan Arcos, uh, I'll show you the Moringa beds here in a second because I, uh, it's, it's doing so well. It's huge. But check, check out all these pods on this, on this um, PKM1. This was planted from seed um, a little over a year ago, probably a, a year, maybe 16 months ago. So within one year, within a little over a year, it just like just loaded up with pods. And it's a pretty thick trunk here. It's doing pretty well. So PKM1s grow really fast. I mean, it's so heavy that there's pods hanging on the ground. <laughs> um, so there's the PKM1s. And this one, I'm not sure if it's PKM1, but there's a chance because it's producing so many flowers. 
and pods. So, all right. I want to show you, you know, this is, I'm basically, this is going to be a backyard video today. Um, what I can do tomorrow is, a, or I mean, Wednesday is give you a front yard video if you guys would be, like it. So if you guys want me to give you a front yard update live on Monday at five, let me know. Oh, look at that. I just caught her. She just ran right up the tree. I, mi I missed it on the camera, but look, she's at the top. <laughs> look like Royal Point Sienna's. What the, oh yeah, the, the mesquite. It does kind of look like a Royal Point Sienna, which I'm gonna show you the Royal Point Sienna tomorrow because that's in the front and it's doing amazing. It was a little stick this spring. I'm gonna put this egg in my pocket. Hopefully I don't break it. What are you doing up there, baby? She's just sitting up there. Hey baby, what are you doing? Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Whoa. <laughs> What are you doing, baby? <laughs> Monkey kitty, yes she is. And actually it was raining the other day and she was out in the pouring rain hanging out with me. Yeah, she loves the rain, which I've never seen a cat enjoy the rain before. She loves it. <laughs> and she loves living ring of trees. So this is the greenhouse here um, I put up. I, I had one of my friends um, their backyard garden design for a greenhouse was kind of this two inch PVC. So I just did a huge one and the storm, could, I got to really tie down my, my shade cloth now, but everything in here is doing pretty well. My bees are right at the back. So I'm going to give you a quick look, all the storage right there. All those need to be full with moringas by the way. So I need more soil, some little moringas here. And these are all of some sugar cane cuttings that I just took let's see how they're doing um, about ready to plant them all I think I have some roots on some of them I don't know they look pretty vital I just kind of keep them in the water till I got a chance to plant them I got a whole bunch of them out here in in the pots getting some sprouts on that one but Hey, Juan Arcos, uh, do I eat the sugar cane? You know, I would eat the sugar cane if I had a press. I just, I don't really like chewing on it with my teeth. It doesn't really feel that good for me. But I love the juice, so I just need to get a press. But all the little trees in the greenhouse are doing great. And then come see the bees. The little secret garden entrance back here. Hi, everybody. You can watch them when they fly in with the pollen on. Let's see. I've been, I, uh, these are Cordovans. I'm sitting right here by their hive. They're actually, when they're flying, they're hitting my arm. I'm right in their flight path and I'm right by the hive so cameras I'm touching the hive with my fingers and the bees are amazing because you know what I have no ill intention to be okay I think I'm back so the bees were too far away from the house that's why I was cut, getting the video cut off right there. So hopefully I'm back. And uh, check out Juan Arcos, check out the Moringa bed. Look, I took this one and I, I just weaved it together. <laughs> but I, you chopped this one down, man. I chopped this down not that long ago. And this whole thing is <laughs> like, like I, I, just, I, can't, I just can't believe these trees. I'm so in love with a tree and it's so weird, non-sexually just in love in general with a tree. But, this one right here too, passion fruit. I put the net on the tree and it's just growing straight up that grapefruit trellis. Pretty cool. Um, also one Arcos, you might be interested in checking this one out. This is giant leaves cutting uh, campfire moringa. Boom. Just like insane. Way above my head, like all the way up to the electric wire, above the electric wire. 
these moringas grow so fast so all right does anybody have any questions thank you guys so much for joining does anybody have anything they want to see or any questions they have before i uh go today i just want to show you a quick uh update on the backyard and go live um if not, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to me already. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so, uh, so I can show you when I post next, which right now is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 p.m. So uh, we'll keep that schedule, but I might be taking some different um, season breaks here soon to give you guys some additional different content. But I'll let you know about that soon. Anyways, uh, let me see. Are you still growing figs? I am growing figs. In fact, I have two figs I just planted out by the duck pen. I'll show you that in a second. And also I have a whole row of figs right up front. But that's going to be on Wednesday at 5, which I'll show you that live at 5. on. When will the Moringas, Justin Wood, what's up, dude? When will the Moringas start to lose their leaves? Well, so I'm in Phoenix. It depends on where you are. I'm just going to put this back on the tripod here. So I can give you guys a steady shot there at the end. Boom. Okay. When do the Moringas start to lose their leaves? Well, you know, I'm in Phoenix, so it always depends on the region that you're in. Uh, Tucson. So it depends on how cold you get. Arr, you listen to my AC unit just go brrr. <laughs> totally works though, but. Um, so if it gets right now they're going to slow down growth the growth is going to slow down on the moringas they're not going to stop growing they're going to actually not stop growing until december the end of december probably here in phoenix and tucson but when it starts getting colder i think tucson might get a little bit colder than phoenix i'm not sure but we only had three freeze freezes last year and those three freezes were pretty harsh on some of the trees in my backyard but they didn't touch my trees in my front yard because they're so close together um and they they were a whole year in the ground so if I planted right now in in fall, like for mangoes and stuff, I would probably have a problem because they might die during one of the freezes in February. Moringas, on the other hand, aren't probably gonna die on you. And if they do, if they're really small, they might. But if they have like a six months of growth during the hot season, they're probably not gonna die on you in the winter. My Moringa lost their leaves due to bringing it in the house too early, trying to protect it from the frost. I'm growing one in the container from seed. Got it. Okay, so, oh, gotcha. So, yeah, you're in New Jersey. Um, yeah, and well, New Jersey's interesting. It's a totally different place to grow. Oh, wait, you're either in New Jersey, and now you're in Cali, or you're from New Jersey, and now one of those two. I got to see here. You're from New Jersey, and you live in Cali. Got it. Okay, sweet. Got it, got it, got it. Um, so... As long as they don't freeze, they don't really like to be inside and they don't like to be in pots. Oh, you're in Sacramento. Okay, cool. Um, I think you guys get freezes there. I think, do you freeze? How many times do you freeze a year? Um, does it, I don't think it snows, but I, I think it gets colder in, in Sacramento than it does in Phoenix. So the in, inside stuff is really just keep it, keep the roots from dying. Yes, we do in December. Okay, got it. So you, you will want to bring it inside probably for the winter if it freezes. But here's the thing. Plant it right away the day after the last frost in 2019. So plant it in the ground wherever you're going to want it the day after the last frost. It'll slowly kick in because it, it likes the heat. But it'll start kicking in and it'll have all spring, all summer, all fall to get big before the winter. And then in the winter, hopefully it got big enough to where you just protect the roots chop the whole tree down and then let it come back the next year so that's kind of the goal is to get get it to where it'll just take care of the winter um where the roots get big enough and deep enough to where the freezes on the top won't kill the tree that's the whole point of trying to get it uh bigger um they don't love pots you can grow them in pots but if you grow them in pots get as big of a pot as you can like the biggest pot oh shoot hey baby sorry honey she always walks right underneath me <laughs> I just stepped on it. Well, not really that bad, but anyways, um, does that answer your question? I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, Justin. Um, so, so about the Moringas losing their leaves, I don't think that they are going to, it's not, it's not like they're going to just drop their leaves like a deciduous tree. Like in the winter, 
my recommendation would just be to chop it down. So they're gonna lose their leaves because you're chopping it down and harvesting all the leaves. So that's what I would do with moringas. Um, if you have a canopy moringa that is literally protecting a whole canopy, then um, you might not wanna trim it until uh, spring, like after winter, because if it's a canopy moringa, I think I have ants all over my feet right now. Uh, not too bad. But if it's a canopy moringa, it's gonna protect the, the understory stuff from freezes. So I would, like Craig waited to chop his moringa forest down until after winter to protect all of his understory stuff from freezes. So there's a lot of different methods and strategies to use different ways to grow, different spaces you have to grow in. So uh, specific questions, always welcome. Let me know what you guys think. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I think that's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to give you an update on the backyard and tell you if you're in Arizona, you need to put it on your calendars. Stonehaven, our Sunny Slope Open Studio Tour on October 27th, Stonehaven is in it. And you'll be the first people that'll have a chance to buy some uh, Stonehaven Green Gold Fruit, tr Fruit Tree Maximizer and Stonehaven Fortified Wood Chips to inoculate, uh, inoculate your yard. So I will have a ready to use spray too, but I'm not gonna have that on the 27th, I don't think. Um, he bought a few of his plants from Seamus. Oh, yeah, I did. Juan Arcos, have you been to Seamus? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, def definitely. Not recently, I haven't been out to Seamus's recently, but uh, I have bought a lot of my plants from Seamus. Seamus is a staple in Phoenix for the tropical plant scene. I mean, there's a handful of staples for sure, but Seamus is one of them. And uh, if you haven't been down there, you need to go down there. Plus he's redoing the whole place. And uh, I probably haven't even seen it fully updated yet. So I need to have go down there and do a whole new update for everybody on Seamus's place. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you, my Patreons. If you like my shades, then, uh, Shoot over to patreon.com forward slash develop awesome skills. That'd be cool too. So, Nick, do you do a video from there? From Seamus's? Yeah, I will. Well, I'll talk to him. You know, Seamus has to let me, <laughs> but he, he probably will. Yeah, I'll totally ask him. I'll totally do another video and see how. Hey, Paulette, how are my avocados? Well, you got to stay tuned for Wednesday because today was just my backyard. Wednesday at five. I'm just going to go live at five on Wednesday again, and that's going to be in my front yard. Uh, and that's where my avocados are and they're doing pretty good. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you all. Please have an awesome day and go plant something this weekend. And until next time, develop awesome skills. Love you guys. Now I got to figure out how to end this live video. I don't even know. Oh, maybe there. <laughs>